This series will be covering quite a few of the poses. This series... Siri thought I was talking to it, so yeah. everyone, it's Hannah and welcome to the first video in the yoga basic series that I've decided to do on this channel. This is kind of just like a few of the poses that are super common and the most practiced, the, the most basic, the most foundational, and some yoga terminology that you should know if you're starting out. So this is especially helpful if you're a beginner, but even if you've been doing yoga for a while, I think sometimes when we do something for so long, we sometimes just end up going on autopilot and not really totally checking in with every step. Sometimes we kind of just, we don't, I guess mindfully go through the checklist of what requires us to be in a pose. So grab your mats so you can practice along with me and today we'll be covering Tadasana or Mountain Pose. So Tadasana or Mountain Pose is a grounding pose and it's actually a foundation for standing poses. It improves your posture, your balance and even releases stress when you practice it with correct breathing. And because this is a standing pose, it really strengthens your legs and your back and it can actually help relieve sciatica. So to set up your mountain pose, you will begin by bringing either bring your feet together or you can have them hip width apart uh, for a wider base because this will be easier for you to balance. If this is new to you, this might feel a little bit more comfortable because when you're right here, you might kind of feel a little wobbly. Uh, but whatever is good for you, definitely go for that. And we'll just kind of first begin by playing around with the balance. So kind of try to move around and feel all four corners of your feet supporting you. Uh, you can kind of rock on your feet from front to back and just kind of feel uh, where your weight's shifting and uh, what's really supporting you. And try to also lift your toes off the ground to really feel uh, all four corners of the feet supporting you. Because a lot of the time when we're in mountain pose, uh, people kind of cling to the ground with their toes and kind of rely on their toes too much to keep them balanced. But in reality, you should have a good strong foundation without relying on clinging onto the ground so hard with your toes. So just kind of play around with that. Maybe even try to sway with your toes off the ground and just kind of see where your balance is, where your center is. That's just a nice little exercise to get you more familiar with your body's balance and where your center really is. After playing around a little bit, you can drop your toes and then start by trying to kind of engage the quads and lifting the kneecaps so that there's this lift in the front thighs. If this whole straight leg thing isn't really comfortable for your knees because of an injury or whatever else, then definitely feel free to kind of have a soft bend in the knees when you are practicing this pose. Otherwise, just keep your legs straight. And with this action of standing up tall, you should also feel your inner thighs kind of curving in together. It's a really subtle motion, but if you want to practice this more, you can grab a towel or a thickly folded blanket or a yoga block or whatever and kind of put it between your thighs and just feel it roll back with your thighs. So your thighs are here, the blocks in between or whatever. When your thighs roll in, the block or the blanket should roll backwards with it. Um, so you can play around with that if uh, what I'm talking about is an unfamiliar feeling, you can definitely test that out. I'll turn to the side so you guys can probably see my posture. So our foundation from the ground to our legs is good. We're strong and stable from there, but what about the rest of us? Our pelvis, our uh, spine, all of that still needs a little bit of checking. So a lot of people do tend to stand a little funny. So if you are by any chance here, just gently tuck the tailbone in and under. And if you are the complete opposite, you might be all the way over here. Just kind of become mindful of that and fix your posture accordingly. So our pelvis should now be neutral. As for the rest of the upper body, we bring the shoulders up, back, and down, lengthening through the spine and the neck and creating this space between your shoulders and your ears. This is usually a thing that you should check through your entire yoga practice, really. You, we usually do want our shoulders far away from the ears, so just keep that in mind. And we're opening through the chest here, and after the hands, we can bring them to our sides, and I will actually face you so you can see this from the front. As you see, my arms are just to my side, and thus creating that uh, mountain shape that the pose is named after. From here, my drishti or my eye gaze should just be parallel, it should be straight ahead. So if I'm standing over here, then my eye gaze is just straight ahead. This also assists in creating this neutral uh, position in the neck so that you're not craning your neck backwards. So you're not looking upwards and you're not craning your neck. You're not looking downwards or in creating this extra length in the neck. You are just kind of looking forward. Another cool trick for balancing poses, and this works for pretty much all poses. In this situation, we are looking parallel to where we stand. So we, our gaze is at eye level, but try to pick a point that is still. If you are in a group class, 
looking at a point in the wall is going to help a lot better with your uh, balance and with stabilizing yourself than with looking at someone straight in front of you who might themselves be wobbling. That kind of wobbling could actually confuse you and end up kind of uh, compromising your own balance. For a little bit more of a challenge, you can choose to close your eyes because that kind of challenges your balance a little bit more. If you don't feel safe to do so yet, you can always just soften the gaze. I'm also quite guilty of this sometimes, but I think a lot of the times we kind of uh, view mountain pose as just a prep pose and not something to kind of stay in for long enough. So let's actually dedicate some time right now to practice it just a little bit together for five breaths. So we can have our feet together or hip width apart. I'll actually go hip width apart today. And same kind of checklist, pelvic tilt is neutral, shoulders up, back and down, arms are by our side, eye gaze is straight ahead and then your eyes are either soft or you can close them completely if you feel safe to do so. And we breathe. So. Five inhales, five exhales. So that's it for Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Stay tuned for the next few videos that are coming up. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.